Welcome to the fourth part of my uh, Pi Game tutorial series. In this part, I'll be covering camera movement and parallax scrolling. Um, I'll be referring to camera movement as scrolling, though. Um, one important thing I need to announce is that I'll be changing the license for these videos and the code produced in them to uh, put it under the public domain so you can use it for whatever you want. The script I'm using in this video is just the uh, same as what I made in the last video, so I'm just working off of that. I'll cover all the changes in this video. So the first thing I want to do is actually just replace this uh, game map thing with an actual file. Um, I wrote a file, and it's a slightly larger map. I added a small little island over here. But yeah, it's never really good to write your maps in your code. So what I'm going to start with is by writing a function to read that. And then I'm going to open a file of the paths specified in the parameters and instead of data to the contents of the file close the file and then I'll split the data by the new line character because each well, each line it represents a different y value and um, the backslash n character is a new line character I was on Windows I think I think it's slightly different on uh, things like Linux or something. I'm going to create a game map list and then I'm going to iterate through the uh, data. Now I'll um, add the strings, well the string, um, so like each row here is just like this row or like this row. It's just a long string of numbers. Um, and you can split up a string into a list using um, the uh, list function. It just um, turns an iterable object into a list. And then I can just return the game map. Set the game map to load map. And then uh, the path to the map, which is just map. Uh, the function adds a .txt onto the end. so. I just have to put in map and it should load the map. If everything went right, I sh it should be the same as it was before. Okay. Next up is the scrolling part. So uh, scrolling is something a lot of people get confused about, but it's not too complicated. The way it works is you just move all the tiles by a certain value. Well, all the things on screen by a certain value. And I uh, refer, refer to that value as a scroll value. So I'm going to add a scroll variable here. And then this contains the scroll on the x-axis and the y-axis. It's just like how far the camera has moved, if you want to think of it that way. Next, I apply the scroll to the thing. So I'm going to go scroll 0. So that I'm adding the x-axis of scroll to the x-coordinate of tiles when I um, render them. And then I need to add the y-coordinate, which is going to be the uh, second value of scroll. And then I also have to apply that value to the player. Now if I modify that scroll value, which I'll just set to increment automatically, um, we'll find that uh, everything on the screen should move and we should be able to see a little bit to the right. I made a mistake here. It's scroll 0. Adding to the x value of scroll. Actually, wait. That's the wrong way. I forgot. Normally I subtract instead of adding. So if you move, the, in theory, if you move the quote-unquote camera to the right, then everything should move to the left. So if you add to the um, scroll, everything should move to the left, which would mean you'd subtract. So now everything should move to the left, and I should be able to see this island here that I added. That's uh, this island here. Now I'm going to make the scroll follow the player. I can lock it to the player, so it just is where the player is, but it looks nicer if you make it follow the player with a little bit of lag. We will add to the scroll the value of the player's coordinates minus the current value of the scroll. So this value is the difference between the position of the player and the scroll, so if I just left it like this, the scroll would be set to the player. One more important thing to note is the scroll location is really the top left um, corner of the screen, 
which would mean that if I left this, the left side of the screen would line with the player, which would mean that the screen's quite a bit off from where we'd want it to be. So actually I can leave that and just give an example. See, look, the player's all the way over here. We don't want that. So first of all, we want it to align with the center of the player, not the left side of the player, and the player's coordinates are on this le top left corner here. So you have to add in a value to to make it for the player and the fact that you want it in the center. So f in our case, that value is going to be minus 152. Our display, which is the scaled down version of the actual window, because we're scaling everything up, is 300 pixels wide. So the center is 150 pixels to the right. So we want to subtract that amount. And then that extra two is because the player is five pixels wide and we want the uh, camera to be focused on the center of the player, not the left side. And then now we um, apply that to the Y axis. I scroll on. And then this time the number is going to be 106 because half of 13 is about 6.5, which I'm going to round to 6. And then um, this screen is 200 pixels tall. Half of that is 100. And then this should lock the screen to the player and put it at about the center. It just doesn't look that nice. The camera isn't very smooth that way. So I, uh, normally you could write this uh, differently. You could just um, set it to uh, the player instead of adding the difference. The reason why I'm taking the difference here and adding that is so I can just do this. Let's do, let's do 20. So because this is the difference in the um, between the scroll position and the player, I can divide that amount and add that so that it's adding um, a fraction of the distance the camera is from the player. And the closer the camera gets to the player, the less it'll add every time. So as you get farther away from the camera, it'll move quicker, and as it gets closer, it'll start slowing down. Uh, this creates a nice camera effect that I use in a lot of my games. So if you look now, the camera is just kind of following the player a bit um, with a little bit of lag behind it, but it looks nice. Uh, there's one more issue here. It, it's probably hard to see in the video, but the tiles sometimes get their spacing a bit weird here. Um, and that's because uh, I, sometimes you'll see uh, a gap in the pixels and like the tiles will kind of move around in place and it, it looks weird. You'll notice it if you uh, make larger scale projects with this. Um, the way you fix that is by setting the scroll to an integer, but you don't want to set the actual scroll value to an integer or else it's going to have a problem with this number here because that can be a pretty small number and then the camera will just kind of feel uh, it, it won't look the same and it won't be as smooth. You want to allow um, decimals in that but you don't want to allow decimals in the adjustment here. So one way you can do this is by just putting an integer, well switching that to an integer but I like that's a lot of work um, so what I do is um, I do something like this scroll equals true scroll dot copy actually this needs to be true scroll too so true scroll is the one with the decimals and the, scr the scroll is going to be the one that's an integer so the scroll is going to well scroll zero equals an integer of scroll zero and the scroll one equals an integer of scroll one. And then that's the same as switching all of these to integers. Um, I'm just, uh, this needs to be true scroll two. Um, you, you won't really notice it, but uh, the tiles aren't like ending up a pixel out of place or something now. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to add was the uh, parallax scrolling. So, first of all, I'm going to have to define a few objects for this. I don't want to randomly generate it because that could be confusing. So I'm just going to write a few objects here. All right, so I've created a few objects here. Um, these four numbers are in the pygame.rect form. Um, so it's x position, y position, um, width, height. And then there's this number here. So the way parallax scrolling works is you just multiply the scroll value by um, 
a certain value so you can get uh, an effect where some things are moving faster than other things as the camera scrolls. Um, so if I had, were scrolled 100 pixels to the right, um, I would take this value, multiply 100 by that, and I'd end up with 25. So this uh, object would now appear at something like um, um, 145 pixels. Now that I've got my objects for the background, I'm going to render them. So first of all, I want to add a just a uh, rectangle in the background, so it's not just sky back there. Um, I'm gonna make it green. <laughs> so why not? All right, that should add a. Uh, so now we've got this green rectangle back here, some kind of background or something. I don't know. Um, now we want to iterate through those background objects. And then you want to set the um, rect to the uh, well, the rectangle to the values for that object, but it has to be adjusted for the scroll. So you're going to take the x value, which the second value in so this is one one background object. The first value is the scroll multiplier, and then the second value is basically the object's base data. So that would be background object one zero for the x value. And then I have to subtract the scroll value. So at this point, it's setting the scroll value where the, the tiles should be. So like it would basically follow the tiles. And then we want to multiply it by that uh, multiplier that I mentioned earlier. And now, it, it should be moving slower than the tiles in the background. And then I got to do the same stuff for um, the y-axis. So the y-axis is the second one, and the scroll one, and then it's got the same multiplier. If you just want it to be a parallax along the x-axis, you can just take out this whole thing and then just set it to the y-value there. But I don't want that. And then background object one, Two, which is the width and then the height so now that we've got our rect we want to render them but I don't want to um, make them the same like the ones with the 0 0.25 multiplier and the ones with the 0 0.5 multiplier to be the same colors because that's hard to tell the difference from it's more noticeable if I make them different colors so I'm going to split up the colors based on their uh, multipliers so if background object 0, so the multiplier, is 0 0.5, then I'll draw the rect on the display of the color 1422 150, which is another green, uh, but it's a brighter green, of the object rect that I just defined. And then otherwise, so this is going to be the case with the 0 0.25 multipliers, um, I'm going to switch the color to 991.85. Oh, there should be an S there. All right, so here are some of the background objects with the parallax scrolling. This is very much a uh, parallax effect. Um, yeah, so there's like, uh, you, there's four layers. There's the tile layer, there's the 0 0.5 multiplier layer, which is this lighter green stuff, um, which is this stuff. And there's the darker green in the third layer, which is this. And then there's that background layer I wrote a moment ago, which is just one uh, solid rectangle. It's uh, at the 0, 120x, and it's 300 pixels across, which is the width of the display, and then 80 down, which is how much further it is to the bottom of the screen. So, yeah, there's four layers here, which is completes the parallax effect. You can do it with however many layers you want. Um, yeah, one thing to be careful of is you have to be careful about like the rendering order. So that it lines up, you don't want to uh, render the 0 0.5 multiplier things before the 0 0.25 multiplier things, or else you're going to end up with an effect where the slower th moving things are in the front, which looks pretty weird. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in um, this tutorial episode. Um, if you want to take a look at the code written here uh, for yourself, I'll link the project in the description. Um, also, it's been 10 months since the last part of the series, so 
I've done a lot since then, and I've actually made a project that uses um, a lot of stuff I've done in uh, this series and what I plan on doing. Um, and uh, it's on itch.io. I'll link it in the description. It's a platformer about food. Well, kind of. It, it, it's mostly just a platformer. And uh, the source code is available if you get it on itch. So it's a great reference for a much larger project that uses a lot of the same concepts I'm going to use in this series. In the next part, I'll be covering um, In Infinite Worlds, but I'm going to have to rewrite the tile system that I'm using here to do so. So that'll be interesting. I hope you'll take a look at the next one.